Hello there and welcome back to The Closet Historian and back to my sewing room for a review of everything I made down here in 2021. Last year I made a video recapping all of my 2020 projects and you can see that video here if you'd like to see everything I made in the year of 2020 and my goal was to make less things here in 2021. And luckily here in 2021 I have only made around 40 things so I did a little bit better in this last year. However that did not translate as I hoped to more time for writing but we'll work on that in 2022. I will have a list of all the projects that I made in 2021 in the description of this video. If there is a video that corresponds to that project, if I made it for camera, I suppose, I will link to that video below. So if you'd like to see how something was made, it should be listed below for most of these projects. And then if the fabric is still available over on Mood or Fabric.com or wherever I grabbed the fabric from, I will also have it linked down in the description if it is still available. So if any of you fall in love with any of these fabrics like I did, you can, you know, indulge perhaps. So I, I like to be an enabler. So let's go ahead and jump back in time and take a look at what I sewed in 2021. All right, we begin with this moire jacket that I messed up the bound buttonholes on. If you've watched that video, you know what I mean, but I still do really like this jacket. It looks fine from the outside and no one has to know that my buttonholes are messy a little bit on the inside, but it is quite cute and I can't wait to wear it at dinner. I didn't get to wear it this year, sadly. And then I made this silk bow tie blouse over on Patreon. This is just a bow neckline blouse that you can tie uh, higher up or lower down. You can tie the bow behind your neck. It looks quite cute as well. I need to make some more of these because I really was super happy with how this one came out. I wish I could find more nice printed silk fabric like this. But sadly, the fabric shop where I got that one has since closed. But here's my black velvet dress redo. You may have seen this last year. I basically made this dress from scratch. The only thing about this that I didn't do from the start is the sleeves, but this was a vintage dress that I remade into something that worked better for me in my wardrobe. And then I have this leopard print dress that I made out of a leopard print stretch denim from moodfabrics.com. I have the darts on the outside of this dress here, not that you can really tell because of course it's a very busy pattern. This is a very simple 1950s inspired simple like sheath dress that I can style in many ways of course here with black patent and again I can't wait to wear it out because I didn't get to wear this one out yet either. The panini times honestly. And then of course I have the cicada gown day bonus here. We have the first costuming project of the year. I had made the skirts in 2020, but in 2021, I made the day bodice here with its cicadas down the back. I really do love the cicadas down the back. I need to make a more modern, and by modern, I mean like 1940s style jacket with cicadas down the back like this. I would love it. But then I have, of course, the new uh, apron and train and ball gown bodice for that as well. So I made the day bodice and then this ball gown bodice with all of the beadwork on it and the trained overskirt. Um, so I made the rest of the cicada gown this last year as well. Then I have my brown twill A-line skirt that I made for the A-line skirt tutorial video here on the channel. Again, the link to that will be in the description below if you too would like to learn how I make A-line skirts. You can also put the zipper in the side. This one has the center back zipper, of course, because it's me. And then I made this copy of an Alexander McQueen design. This is not a Lifetime McQueen. This is a more recent McQueen design that was for sale in Netta Porter. And I saw it and thought to myself, you know, that's just a combo of like a handkerchief circle skirt and a pencil skirt. I wonder if I could make that. So I tried with this dress. And then one of my more popular projects this year was this lemon dress with a like tulip kind of fluted skirt here. This is another project that I made here on the channel. So if you'd like to see how this dress is made, the video will be linked below. Weirdly enough, this video did quite well. I wasn't expecting this video to be the one that was like surprisingly popular, but thank you. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I can't wait to wear this dress in the summertime while drinking limoncello myself, you know? And then for some silly reason, I decided to completely hand sequin a little evening jacket top thing that I made this over on Patreon. It's got this kind of funny peplum. It was inspired by a lot of the Mugler fashion shows from the 90s that I was watching to make something hourglass shaped and very sparkly for some reason. I was feeling glam that day. Then I made this red rayon chalet dress out of a chalet that had been in my stash for ages. I made this as a mock-up for a rayon crepe dress that I wanted to make because the crepe I had in mind, I loved it so much that I didn't want to mess up anything to do with it. So I wanted to go ahead and make a full mock-up first. So this was the mock-up version of the dress. And here is the real version of the dress in that rayon crepe. This was a rayon crepe from fabric.com. I again, try not to shop with them much because they are owned by Amazon. But I just loved this print so much. It's this off-white with black flowers in a very like 40s large scale print with also little stars and moons scattered around it as well. I also made this house coat over on Patreon this last year. And then of course I made another house coat here on the channel. So two hooded house coats last year. Um, has this dropped lowered sleeve. This one turned out rather monastic, I think. It looks kind of monk-like. It's some sort of monk's robe 
medieval monk's robe that I wear down here in the basement when it gets super chilly. And I do like having the hood for those instances. And then I was getting rather silly while modeling this. Next up is my bug print cotton poplin dress to show how I make these gathered necklines. Again, this was a video here on the channel, so if you'd like to see how I make this dress, um, I do have a few of this dress now. You'll notice it's quite common in my wardrobe. I think I have three or four of these in this exact pattern, A-line skirt and the gathered neckline with the all-in-one sleeve like this. I just love this for a simple cotton dress. And speaking of simple cotton dresses, this is a cotton sateen dress I made off camera. We have a few off camera projects here that I did end up making a little mini lookbook of to show my patrons, but all of you haven't seen them yet. So here are some dresses that I made this year that I haven't shown you. This one is in a kind of houndstooth print cotton Twill from moodfabrics.com. This one, fabric was on sale for like $4 a yard, so I could not resist it. And it makes this rather workwear ready looking little dress here that I could wear for meetings in the summertime. Not that I have any meetings and not that it's summer anytime soon. And then I used the leftover wool for making that Blade Runner dress back in 2020. Did I make that in 2020 or 20, 2020? Yeah. Uh, I used the leftover wool and pieced together this little dress as well. Of course, a lot less piecing than the original Blade Runner dress was, which was lucky and much easier to finagle. I also threw together another one of my wrap back tops in this cotton sateen, one of my favorite fabrics that I discovered. I don't think there's any more left on this of this fabric on Mood, but I will link to it. Anyway, they do have an ivory background version of this, so they may have still have some of that in stock. But I bought another yard and made one of my wrap back tops just because I love this print so dang much, and I love that wrap back top pattern, so they're perfect together. And then this was a brushed cotton twill from moodfabrics.com that I just fell in love with the colors. We all know how I love green. So once again, all in one sleeve, simple 1950s inspired sheath dress. This is my favorite shape of dress to make, as we can see, because this is like the third or fourth one of the year already. And here's another 1950s pencil skirted dress, basically with a sort of winged cuff. And again, it's an all in one sleeve. This is a very cozy, comfy dress. It's a thicker silk wool blend is what this is actually. It's got a bit of a fleck to it. And I really like this nutmeg color that I find I can pair with lots of different colors of accessories in my wardrobe. Looks nice with red as well. You can wear this lighter brown with black, so it's very versatile. And speaking of versatile, here's a little black dress in a black stretch cotton pique from Mood. I really like this fabric for dresses like this. This is probably like if I could only save one dress in my wardrobe, I may save this one. High neckline to wear with all my brooches. And it's just the skirt is narrowed in a little bit. I really love it. This won't be the last black dress we see either. This was my film noir uh, femme fatale summer dress that I wanted to make a sort of femme fatale dress that was appropriate for the summertime. And this is a cotton sateen, so it can be thrown in the wash. Another dress that can be thrown in the wash machine here, we have a white cotton seersucker dress that I made over on Patreon, showing how to move the darts up into the neckline and make this keyhole style neckline here with some fun straw accessories. And then it was time to make the Carmine gown. So I made this cotton bustle gown this last year and man do I have my bustle figured out at this point look at how shelf like that is back there full uh, lobster cage bustle and a very strange bolster pillow that sort of ties around my waist is what's creating this shelf situation in the back but after the carmine gown it was time to start sewing a bunch of projects to bring with me on my great western road trip that I took this last year so I made this black button-down shirt over on patreon with some Western top stitching detailing going on here, and I actually ended up making a gold batik version as well after I had perfected that particular pattern. And then this is my other shirt pattern that I made last year. I made this shirt here on the channel. I think it looks nice tucked in, although it's not tucked in perfectly here. And then also tied, I wore a bunch of these shirts out on my trip. Um, I made this one in this kind of blue color. I made another in a sort of greenish color of the same fabric. And then I have a burgundy one and I have a yellowish orange blend one. These fabrics were from fabric.com. I will link to the page of this like style of fabric. I think it's called Dobby, Cotton Dobby. It's actually rather an inexpensive fabric and I just loved these shirts. I still really love this shirt pattern. I need to make a few more. I have a few more fabrics earmarked for this style here in my stash. I think I'll make this exact shirt again, basically in some more colors because it was super useful to have with me on my trip. And here's the green one layered underneath this ridiculous khaki outfit here. This is a pair of high-waisted trousers in this twill, and I also made a pair of jodhpurs out of the same twill here, and my funny safari vest I made to wear for a ride in Bryce Canyon. I did make this vest over on Patreon. And then I threw together this cotton dress really quickly before I left because my mom had brought me this fabric back from France, and I wanted to bring it with me on my trip, so I made this dress and actually ended up wearing it in Hollywood. And then I used the leftover carmine gown fabric to make this little Edwardian inspired top, which you all saw here on the channel as well. So I can link to that video below. 
that I wore while in Calico out in California. We have a few clips here of me wearing things that I haven't shown you in studio or talked about yet here on the channel out while I was on my road trip. So I have some high-waisted trousers that I haven't really talked through yet. I wanted to make I wanted to make a video about basically all the trouser modifications I used to make several pairs of trousers for this trip. And then of course I have again more shirts that I just don't have good modeling clips of yet. So I'm going to be making a Westward wardrobe like review video here talking about all the things I made for this trip because there were a handful of things that I just haven't shown in any other way other than just a few glimpses of them in field notes like this palm tree print trouser and crop top set that I wore in Palm Springs. I haven't talked about that one yet but I really enjoyed wearing it. I made this plum colored rayon dress over on Patreon this last October. You can tell it's October because we have my Halloween set going on here with all the spider webs and pumpkins. I do still have a couple of these pumpkins hanging around. Turns out, real pumpkins, they last forever, honestly. And then I made a green rayon dress here on the channel, so I can link to the video where I made this green dress recently. It again has a sort of drop sleeved. This was me showing how to do the all-in-one sleeve in a long version. It's kind of a dolman sleeve here. And I really love the color of this dress, and it matches my Royal Vintage Arbera American Duchess shoes perfectly here. Then I made this black rayon dress over on Patreon. This is a black rayon jacquard. I've already worn this dress out twice. It's just perfect for me again. High neckline. It's like the winter version of my other black dresses. How many black dresses did I make this year? The answer is too many. I know. I know. And while I have my hair poodled, let's talk about the Mandragora gown here. So of course I made the Mandragora silk skirt here, and then I went ahead and made a mock-up out of this black moiré. So this is my mock-up bodice for the Mandragora gown that I'm thinking of now calling the Whitby gown because of Whitby jet. Um, where all the morning jet came from in the Victorian era. Well, all the real stuff. And because it's easy for me to say the word Whitby as opposed to some of the other words that I couldn't pronounce, uh, like anthracite, which I never can really get right on the first try. But this was the, you know, figuring out how this plastron was going to work, how I was going to close this up with hooks and eyes, just figuring out everything out in a full scale for this mock up here before I made the real Mandragora bodice out of this silk. And of course, I have my um, Trovlor moths pinned on here, but I did make the actual moths this last year as well, these ones here. This was my female emperor moth, and then the male I have pinned onto the front here of the Mandragora bodice proper. Of course, the beadwork is not finished on the back of this yet, but we'll get there, and eventually I will make an evening bodice to match this as well as a hat for this day bodice version. A dress I ended up making off camera was this black rayon little drapey cocktail hour number here that I made uh, for a Patreon video that never came to be. I actually was filming this for a Patreon video and then decided it wasn't good enough for Patreon, and so therefore this video, uh, I actually d deleted the footage in a fit of rage, so this dress, although I quite like it, I did not end up making the video for it. So I filmed it, and yet it never will see the light of day. Unfortunate. And then my final project of the year was this purple silk taffeta wrap back top with bishop sleeves, and this was my final Patreon project for this last year. So that was everything I sewed in 2021. And again, like last year, I kind of have a goal for this next year to make even less items. I think my goal for 2021 was to make 30 items or less. So I will go ahead and reinstate that goal for 2022 and hope for the best. Thank you so much for watching my videos and for your support here on the channel. I could not have made this my job without your support here on the channel. And of course, over on Patreon as well. Big shout out thanks to my patrons for giving me my dream job. Thank you all so much for your support. And of course, I'll be back here with more pattern drafting and sewing very, very soon. So I will see you all then. Bye.